Hello everyone, welcome back to Techie Pocket. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Nintendo 64. This thing was released in 1996, and we're just going to be seeing how well it performs in 2017. We're not at all going to be looking at gaming performance, because of course it'll perform exactly the same as it did when it was released in 2017. So there's absolutely no reason to look at that at all. Instead, we're going to be looking at, like, how this thing looks compared to, like, really cheap stuff, you know, like, how it looks in 2017, how it feels, you know, like that. We're going to be looking at, like, the buttons, like, the buttons, the uh, connectors, all that kind of stuff. That's what we're going to be looking at, how this thing is in 2017. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and here it is. Okay, so first of all, the N64 was Nintendo's very first console to use a 64-bit CPU. It launched for around $200, not including any games, and it sold 32.93 million units worldwide. Now let's get into the specs. The CPU is a 64-bit NEC VR4300, clocked at 93.75 MHz. The memory is 4 MB of Rambus RD RAM, and an 8 MB with an expansion pack. The storage is 64 MB game pack. Removable storage is 32 kilobyte controller pack. The GPU is an SGI RCP clocked at 62.5 megahertz. The sound is 16 bit, 48 or 44.1 kilohertz stereo. And the power supply is a switching power supply, 12 volts and 3.3 volts DC. Okay, so seeing that, of course, makes every techie frown. But if you remember that this thing is not doing anything but low-quality, pixelated video games, then I guess let's move on to some more stuff. Okay, moving on to the looks of this thing, it actually looks very, very cheapo. Like, it's, I don't know, very, very cheap. It feels very, very cheap, and that is just no good. It's extremely easy to scratch it. I can almost scratch it with my fingernails. And especially this cover right here, it's just like very, very, very flimsy and very, very cheap. It's just like, you know, it's what, what you would expect from that time. It's, but, you know, it's, you get what I'm saying. It's just so, so, like, cheap. I don't know what else to say. It's just, I don't know. That's all I can say right now. Okay, so everything being cheap, I do have to say the connectors are pretty good. The power supply connector is looking almost like a, a six pin connector for like your computer, but what I really like about this thing is that they have the locking feature for that. The AV plug is a little flimsy, but it is pretty sturdy. And the plugs in the front here, they're pretty sturdy. They're good enough, especially if you're going to be unplugging and plugging in controllers all the time. So I guess that's okay. The switches here are fine. I mean, yeah, you could scratch them still. They're a little flimsy and wobbly. Just if you look a little closely at that wobble, just look at how wobbly that is. I guess it's fine, but uh, yeah, that's one of those things, you know, cheap again. Okay, so that's pretty much it about this video. I don't know what else to say about this thing. As I meant... It was just my earphones. Anyways, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to look at game performance for this thing because it's obviously not going to perform any worse than it did in the beginning already. So that pretty much ends this video. The conclusion of this video is, should you spend the $30 this thing is worth nowadays, I'd say don't waste your $30 on this stupid console. You might as well just get a $5 Optiplex PC for eBay that has free shipping, and you can do a lot more on it than just playing 64 games. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let me know in the comments down below what you like. There'll be some end screens all over this place that you guys can click on if you're interested. Make sure you subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Peace.